Church. Today we'll be starting with carol singing. Unlike carol call-outs, the songs have already been chosen. So we will be starting with 218, which is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Next carol is 219, What Child Is This? Our final carol is O Come All Ye Faithful, 2, 3, 4, verses 1 and 2.
Christmas. Welcome. So, no, you can just go forward from that, Gail. Just go, you, you don't have to do the announcements, just go back to where you are. Yeah, we'll get, that's it. Go ahead back to where the hymn was. There we go. It's all right. And back up a little. There we go. There we go, right there. Thank you. So I've got a, a few announcements. So I apologize a bit for the chill because we've got the doors open, but you'll see why here in a second. Um, and then we'll close those and then we'll warm up. So if you didn't figure out, we're doing things a little bit different this morning. It's an early Christmas. And if you got asked um, to participate in this unrehearsed Christmas story, well, I'm going to ask you again. You can either go outside and grab a, a costume attire, or you can also participate just in your modern-day clothes as well. And as the story is being read later on, you just need to get up and follow along as I give the directions in the story. So it's uh, a familiar story, but with some different twists to it. So, um, and we're grateful to have you here. Please note that our Christmas offering this year is for local blessings, which is a fund that we use locally in the church to support those who are in need. And then also our missionary, Dr. Belinda Forbes, who's a dentist in Nicaragua. So there are special envelopes in the pews, and you can use those envelopes if you're going to make a donation. You don't need to make a designation for either local blessings or Belinda Forbes. Just put Christmas offering, and then whatever the total is, we'll do the math, divide it in half, and send each to each way in that regard. We also have a Christmas Eve candlelight service tonight at 7 p.m. that you're also welcome to come to uh, and attend as well. So I invite you to follow along on the screen or in your bulletins as you worship, and welcome to those of you that are worshiping with us online as well. Let us continue in the spirit of singing plenty of Christmas carols at Christmas time, and I invite you to stand for this one in body or spirit as we sing, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. I invite the Pillars family to come up and light our Advent candles. So as they're coming, we're lighting the fourth candle and the Christ candle, and we're going to sing. When we sing the response, you'll see the words first for the light the Advent candle song for the fourth candle, 
and the refrain, and then we'll sing for the Christ candle and the refrain. So they'll, they'll both the words are up there and also in the bulletin. So. First John 4, 9 through 11. God's love was re revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved, loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Today we light the four Advent candles and recall what the good news mean. First, Christ our hope. Second, Christ our peace. Third, Christ our joy. Fourth, Christ our love. We also light the Christ candle in celebration of his birth. Join me in a word of prayer. O oh God, we thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person. Give us love in our hearts for all people. Amen. Are our characters ready? A long time ago, so long ago that many ancestors have lived and died since that time, a marvelous moment happened. It was miraculous, extraordinary, and really a one-of-a-kind moment, and we know it as the story of the first Christmas. A birth happened, that of a boy, now, lots of birth happen, you say, but this one was different, not only in the circumstances surrounding it, but who the boy was, or perhaps I should say is, because this boy who grew up is still alive today, is one eternal for the ages. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hmm, where to begin? This story involves God and God's dealing with us, for we are his beloved creation of humanity. We who have surprised and pleased and disappointed and frustrated and amazed him through years and years. 
But God has never given up on believing that his creation could be as wonderful as intended. And even though it's been marred by ill-advised choices and prideful ambitions and power-greedy schemers and violence-driven bullies, all committed by people who, when given free will and free choice, decided to do their thing instead of God's thing, God says, I still love these people. And so he came up with this plan to provide help in a different way than what he had provided before. He would interject into this world of ours a person who was himself, part of himself, something he hadn't tried before. So he sent his very own son in human form to be a person who walked and talked among us, someone who could be present with us, who would listen to us, sit with us, laugh with us, cry with us, eat with us, teach us how to live. Not to be gods, mind you, but how we could be the best humans we could be through values of love and kindness and caring to be a living witness and to give selfishly for others. Now, we not being God, of course, don't know all the particulars and the full reasons why or how, but we do know some things. We know when, approximately 2,000 years ago, and we know where in the ancient land of Israel and Judea and towns called Nazareth and Bethlehem and Jerusalem, and we do know that God sent messages in the years beforehand to give us clues about what was to take place and the importance and meaning of this pending action. So God took God's self and implanted God's self in the womb of a young woman who was a virgin and not even married to boot. And this young woman, a girl named Mary, she was engaged to an upstanding, honorable young man named Joseph who was a carpenter by trade. And they lived in this small town called Nazareth. And each of them found out about her pregnancy through a visit in different times by an angel. Mary spent part of her pregnancy preparing with her cousin Elizabeth, who was also expecting. But when time drew near, she went back to Nazareth, entering her final weeks when, gosh darn it, a new wrinkle arrived in her plans. It seemed that this big Roman government sent out a notice, and they wanted to do a count of all the people in that area, the people that lived in the Jewish tribal lands, and bureaucrats thought, well, what's the best way to do this? Let's put everybody on the road at Christmas time and send them back to the, the city where they're family on the male side originally came from. So that meant Joseph and Mary needed to travel some 90 miles to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem. But good news, Joseph was able to secure a donkey for Mary to ride on. And so they rode and walked but unfortunately, when they arrived in Bethlehem, the town was crowded, and that's where we pick up the story. Why, look, I think they're here now. Is that a knock we hear? Do we hear it again? Oh, it is. Is that Joseph? And what's that he's asking? He says, my name is Joseph. I've come from Nazareth. We're exhausted, and my dear wife is expecting a child any day now. She can't travel anymore. Do you have a room for us to stay in? And the house owner said, sorry, we're all full up because everybody else has come to town because of this darn census report. So Mary and Joseph shuffled the street, asking person after person for lodging, only to be told that there was no room in the inn. 
My dear listeners, can you hear it shouted out to them? Can you join me? No room. Can't help you. Move along. And this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> Are we going to plan B? <laughs> plan C. We, we have Astrid and Racy, and they are feeling a little bit frightened. The plan was that they would walk all the way with Mary and Joseph to the one inn that gave them room. So they're going to stay right there, and we're going to continue with the story. But I will let you know that I understand from a good source that after our service, Astrid and Bracey will be willing to greet you outside and you can pet them and nuzzle them and maybe even give them treats. So finally, a kind soul took pity on Mary and Joseph and said, I've got a stable and it has some animals in there, but there's room for you and your donkey and you will be dry and warm and you can stay there until you find a better place. Oh, dear sir, thank you, Joseph replied. And so they settled in for the night. And that's the first part of the Christmas story. So let's sing a song about that first part. We can remain seated. It's called The Friendly Beast. And maybe even a reluctant beast or two. Thank you. 
Are you ready to continue? For some of you have some parts to play. Now back in the stable later that night, whether it was from days of riding a donkey or walking or just plain weariness, but certainly because it was the appointed time by God, Mary delivered her child. Mary and Joseph both knew the baby was to be a boy and that his God-given name was Jesus. We don't know if Joseph called the midwife, but Mary, after wiping the beautiful baby clean, she wrapped him in some clothes and used a spare feeding trough that Joseph had cleaned out as a crib. Then she rested. But while Joseph and Mary knew the special circumstances for their baby, no one else did. But that was about to change. And here our scene switches, for we have shepherds. For outside of town, in the fields among the hills, there were shepherds keeping watch over their sheep by night. When suddenly, the night sky above them, around them, and behind them lit up with a bright presence, and the strong voice of a heavenly being spoke to them. And an angel came and stood by the shepherds. Here come the angels. Well, Needless to say, the shepherds at first were frightened with shock. <laughs> but that angel told them, don't worry, it's all good. But then the angel had a very interesting and important message. The angel said, I've got great, 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 great news for you. But not just you, but all the people of the world but you're the very first special ones because you've been chosen to hear it first. In the town of Bethlehem, down the hill there, a baby has been born who is the Son of God. This baby is the Messiah that you have been waiting for. He is the Savior who is the Lord of all. Now this is where it really gets interesting if that wasn't special enough because now the earth and the sky took on an even more luminous tone as all around the shepherds, angels after angels appeared until it was hard to distinguish between angelic being and star. And then voices like many waters rippled around and through them. And then the angels were all speaking and singing over and over again. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace for everyone on earth. It was the most glorious and beautiful sight and sound those shepherds had ever heard. Then, just as suddenly as it begun, the angels faded away and the night sky returned. And so the angels walked back to their angel home. The shepherds knew a not so subtle message when they got one. And they said among each other, we've got to go to town and find the baby that the angels told about. So they 
quickly moved down the hills and guided by their revelation, they were able to find Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in that crowded town. And they brought some sheep with them. Come on. And they went and they worshipped at the manger. And as they gazed at the newborn baby, that they realized that here was even a more beautiful sight than the angelic course. And so they were filled with joy and peace and hope. And they didn't mind missing their midnight snack. And they told Mary and Joseph all about the angels. And then they went back to the fields. And as they walked out of town, they told everybody they met the amazing news about the angel and Messiah's birth. Mary and Joseph just looked at each other with amazement at what the shepherds had told them but they knew every word of it was true, and they realized that God's promised plan of Emmanuel, God with us, was coming true. And even in their tiredness, they were grateful and they praised God. What they didn't realize is there were more visitors to come. But first, after several days, most of the people who had come for the census had packed up and returned home. Of course, they didn't have to deal with giving birth, so Mary and Joseph stayed a bit longer in Bethlehem. But what that meant was, with people leaving, they were able to find better accommodations in town. So they moved to a house, and it was there that strangely attired men, clearly foreigners from the Far East, arrived on camels one day. They didn't knock. But they came right to the house, and the look of joy and wonder and gratitude on their faces was all the calling card that Mary and Joseph needed to know why they were there. And they fell down before the child and pulled out gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Before the wise men left, they shared with Mary and Joseph some of their journey and how they had seen a special star and had read ancient prophecies that spoke of a new godly king to be born. They followed the star so that it led them to the land of Judah. But they stopped in Jerusalem first, thinking that was where the king would be. Alas, they were slightly off. But they got more directions and they found the new child in Bethlehem. And by the way those wise men said it, they realized that the King Herod guy they had met gave them the creeps, and they had a bad vibe about him. So they decided to sneak back to their home country by another way. Anyways, they were really glad they came and found Jesus, and they knew that their trip had been for the right purpose. Mary and Joseph smiled and thanked them and agreed with them. They had no doubt that God's plan for Jesus and for the world would involve excitement and adventure and good news. 
They didn't know how it was all going to unfold, but they were grateful for God's trust in them to be the earthy parents of God's son. They were filled with love, and deep in their hearts, they knew that this is what God's plan ultimately meant. Love for all people. Through the gift of love, this is Christmas. Love came down at Christmas. And that is the Christmas story. Thank you to all our participants, including belated donkeys. We will sing. You can remain seated. We're sleeping, shepherds keep. we come to a time when we share our prayers and joys and celebrations, I will need uh, another angel who would be willing to take this green mic around and to um, uh, offer. Okay, I have C. Well, either. Here we go. We just got to make sure it's turned on and the lights are on. I think it is already, so. Excellent. So what are your joys or thanks or sharings or concerns that you might have? Kaya will come to you if you raise your hand high. I'd just like to say, send Christmas wishes to our friend Steve Contreras, who apparently isn't feeling well. If you're listening, Steve, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Steve. I want to say thanks to the moms and dads who inspired and encourage the children to participate. <laughs> Praise God. Others in the back. While he's walking around, um, I want to lift up, if you would give prayers for Sharon Ballinger, who fell and uh, broke uh, arm and leg the other day and is at the Ridgecrest Hospital and then waiting follow-up for whether it's going to be surgery or whatever. So... Uh, for Sharon, Lord, 
hear our prayers. Scott. And praise for our family and all the others who are able to and have the privilege of getting together at this time of year uh, to share the celebration. Praise, praise God. God. Others. In the back where Gail is at. I just want to lift up also Linda Miller, who um, is recovering nicely from her knee surgery, but she has some other health issues, which is why she hasn't been back to church. So please, and if you have time, give her a call or stop by. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. Any others? Besides a mention for family, for those who may be traveling either today or tomorrow or later this week, we lift up our prayers for them. Lord, and of course, we lift up the situation in um, the Holy Land, in Gaza especially, as uh, the war and conflict raises on, and unfortunately, um, so many who are innocent and non-combatants are being killed. Um, and so we pray for peace there, Lord. We pray for those who this holiday season is a, a challenging time because of all the, the goodness and the Christmas spirit, but there's memories when loved ones are missing from our gathering, and especially if this is the first year in which a loved one has been gone. And so we pray for comfort for those, and we pray for those whose families are going through times wherever they may be with a loved one who is dying. So Lord... I invite you to bow with me in this time of prayer and then following the pastoral prayer to join in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for all these joys and thanks that we have lifted up to you. We also give you our intercessions, the ones that we've named now, the ones that we carry on our own Christmas list. We thank you for the huge risk you took in becoming human in order to bring out the best in us. You entrusted yourself to us. You shared your vulnerability by becoming as a baby. You emptied yourself and led a life that allowed yourself to be abused and killed, all in order to free us from the power of evil and sin. And for that, we are truly grateful and give you thanks. Help us understand and know that you truly are God with us, Emmanuel, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you again for the gifts that you give. If you intend to make a gift today, we have offering plates that are at the back of the pews, and you can just place your gift there um, on the way out as you exit as well. So, Well, our early Christmas draws to a close, and I invite you to stand as you're able in body or spirit as we sing our hymn, Joy to the World.
So following service, there is a lunch in the social hall. If you exit the doors and go left, a light lunch, you're welcome to join us for that as well. But also for the young at heart, there are some activities right outside. Um, I believe there's a pinata and the donkeys hopefully are still there as well, that you can greet the donkeys, our Christmas donkeys, uh, Astrid and Gracie. And thanks to their, um, their, I hate to say the word owners, more like their uh, responsible stewards <laughs> and for being here and for you being here as well. So go forth in this blessing on this Christmas morning eve this day, and for whatever brings the remainder of this day and tomorrow, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you.